Hello, and welcome to this Planetison course on traffic congestion. Uh, my name is Michael Manville. I am a professor of urban planning at UCLA, and I will be your instructor. This is part one of a two-part Planetison module on traffic congestion. Traffic congestion comes up a lot in urban planning. Obviously, it comes up a lot when we talk about transportation planning. If you look at a state's transportation plan or a city's or just talk to traffic or transit planners in your hometown, we also want to talk about congestion because in many ways it has come to dominate not just transportation planning, but other aspects of planning as well. It's what we might think about as an omnipresent problem. And I mean that in two ways, not just because almost everywhere you go that's urbanized, there's some traffic congestion, but also because in almost any kind of planning discussion you encounter at the local level, somewhere congestion is going to come up. It comes up a little too much in transportation. Like there's many transportation problems that we have in urban areas that sort of don't get the attention they should because we're so focused on traffic. And that's not to say traffic isn't a serious problem, only to say that it has grown very large kind of in planning's collective mind. But it also comes up outside of transportation. It comes up just in local politics. People running for office uh, take stands on traffic and that eats up a lot of attention and air that could go to other problems. And it may be most importantly, it comes up when we go to approve housing developments. Right? If you've ever been to a local meeting where a new apartment building or a subdivision is being proposed, people raise all sorts of concerns about that, but it's not uncommon at all to one of the concerns being, what happens with this new density? Is it going to bring more traffic? Right? And as a result of that, I think that a lot of our resources in planning get devoted to traffic congestion in ways that aren't optimal. Right? And, and a, perhaps the biggest example of this is public transportation. You know, public transportation is a very important service offered in urban areas. It could be a lot better in many urban areas. And a lot of it right now is justified based on the idea that it's going to reduce congestion, that, that the purpose of trains, to put it one way, is to make driving faster. What you see on the screen in front of you is the ballot measure that voters in Los Angeles County, where I'm talking from right now, approved in 2016, raising billions and billions of dollars for public transportation. And you see that one of the, the main justifications for it was that this is what we're going to do to deal with our traffic congestion problem. As it turns out, and, and we'll talk more about this, public transportation for all the great things it does isn't a very good way to reduce traffic congestion. If what we mean by reduce traffic congestion is make driving on a particular road faster at a particular time. One of the points that I'm going to want to walk us through in the next hour is that traffic congestion really is a very serious problem. But we've allowed it to become a bigger problem than it needs to be. And we've allowed it to swallow up more of our attention and our resources than it needs to because we don't take the time to really understand it and then as a result to really understand what would help deal with it and what won't help deal with it. Because we don't have a good sense of what congestion really is caused by, we try to solve it with transit, and this not only doesn't solve the congestion problem, it also squanders a lot of the resources that we want to put toward making a better and more effective public transportation system. The first step in thinking about congestion is really understanding what it is. And once we understand what it is, then we can start to think about how big of a problem it might be and what we might do to solve it. 